here. I'm Riley. And I'm Jonathan. I'm Megan. I'm Keely. And I'm Grant. And we're so excited you chose to join us today. And it is December, so you guys know what time that is. It's Christmas time! And a one, and a two, and a one, two, three. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Hey, oh, what fun it is to have one more Christmas time. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. love celebrating Christmas here in Met Kids. Yeah, so we thought we'd start off today with a little competition. We're having a Christmas sweater contest and you get to vote whose sweater is the best. Christmas Sweater Fashion Show! Now it's time for you to go vote for which Christmas sweater is your favorite. Have an adult scan this QR code to go vote. Or you can click the link below this video. And we'll reveal the winner on New Year's weekend. Ooh, what should the prize be? They get to pie someone in the face! Yes! Yeah! Yeah! Now if you want to join the fun, go put your crazy Christmas outfit on and tag us at Met Kids so that we can see your crazy Christmas sweater too. All right, but Christmas isn't all about sweaters and decorations and cookies and snow and all of that. It's about Jesus. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass it off to Story Lab for this one. Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're celebrating Christmas. Oh, and we're also doing this. I'm Amaya. And I'm Zeke. And we're talking about Christmas. Which is celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. What do you love the most about getting ready for Christmas? Oh, everything. The lights, decorations, ooh, Christmas specials. And that's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. Don't forget setting up the nativity. Nativity? You know, all the figures from the Christmas story. Oh, yeah. We still put up the plastic manger scene from when I was a kid. Plus, we bake all sorts of cookies. Oh, I love Christmas cookies. Good, because we're going to do it all by building a gingerbread nativity. Oh, do we have to bake? Nope, but we do have to architect. Here we have all of our characters. We have Mary, we have Joseph, we have baby Jesus, and one, two, three wise men. What about the shepherds? Kit didn't have any shepherds. Oh, well, I'm turning this guy into a shepherd. <laughs> the kid also didn't have any barns or stable or a shed. So we're we gonna be using... Graham crackers. Yeah, I mean, this is where our architectural skills really come in. Have you ever made a gingerbread house before? Yeah, but the icing never holds right. The pieces always slide or fall down. Not today, because today we're using... Sugar glue. Mm, I'm not seeing glue. Well, that's because we have to apply super heat and so it melts like lava. Oh, that's cool. Let's, Let's make, make it. it. Remember, do not do this alone. Grab an adult to help. All right, first step. Pour the sugar into a bottom heavy saucepan. Thank you. All right, that should be enough to start. Step two. Place the sugar on a burner on medium high. Definitely grab a grown up for this part. Step three, swirl the sugar and stir as it starts to melt. Thank you. Oh, 
Oh, here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, we have glue. Woo! It's actually caramelized. Sugar, or sucrose, is a single molecule. When heat is applied, it kicks off a series of chemical reactions. These can form up to 1,000 different compounds that make up caramel. It's so complicated, scientists aren't even sure how it works yet. Step five, keep your sugar glue warm while you build. <laughs> hmm, I think Frank Lloyd Wright will be proud. Who? Oh, the famous architect. Although, I don't think Frank Lloyd Wright worked in gingerbread and sugar glue. Tasty, though. Do we get to decorate? Yes, right now. <laughs> and... <laughs> well, that turned out kind of... I mean, you can tell what it is, right? <laughs> <laughs> Away in a manger, one cookie for a bed. All right, it's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in the third book of the New Testament, Luke. But before Luke, in the very beginning, out of love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to bless the whole world through the Israelites, but over and over, God's people would run to God and then pull away, just like a yo-yo. Then, foreign nations invaded and captured the Israelites. They must have wondered if God still loved them and if he had a plan for them. God spoke through prophets about the great rescuer God would send. And at last, after hundreds of years, God sent an angel to tell a girl named Mary she would have a very special baby. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey, everybody. Hey, Brian. Hey, Brian. Okay, the stage was set. After so many long years, God's amazing rescue plan was underway. And God actually used a foreign king to help carry out that plan. The Jewish people lived under Roman rule and the Roman leader, Caesar Augustus, needed money for his fine palaces and large army. I command a census of every single person in my entire empire. That meant that every person had to be counted and placed on a list to pay expensive taxes to Rome. And news of this census traveled all the way from Rome to the tiny town of Nazareth in Judea, on the very edge of the Roman Empire. Hey ye! Hey ye! Every person must go immediately to their own hometown to be listed. A carpenter named Joseph and the girl he was engaged to marry, named Mary, heard the decree. Whew, I guess I'll be making a road trip to Bethlehem. I guess we'll be making a road trip to Bethlehem. Both Joseph and Mary had been born into the family line of King David, so they would have to make the week-long journey to Bethlehem, the town of David, in order to be counted. Now, this was more than a little inconvenient, as Mary was nearly ready to have a baby. A baby whose birth had been announced by an angel! You will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You must call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. The trip from Nazareth to Bethlehem was uh, about 70 miles, which is just a couple hours by car, but a whole week of travel on foot or by donkey. The journey was long and dusty. Camping out on the rough ground could not have been very comfortable for Mary. At last, Mary and Joseph saw the town of Bethlehem. They must have been ready for a hot bath and a quiet place to stay after that long journey. But the little town of Bethlehem was not so still and silent. Lots of other people had come to be counted as well. They filled every inn and guest room in town. There has got to be room for us somewhere. Have you checked with all of your relatives? Even my great aunt Hulda and, and my third cousins twice removed. Finally, the very last home that Mary and Joseph tried had a room Sort of. They were offered a place to stay with the animals. I don't know about this. It's dry. It's warm. And this baby really, really, really needs a place to be born. 
So Mary and Joseph settled into their most unusual guest room, and there with the cows, and sheep, and chickens, Mary's brand new baby boy was born. It's just like the angel told you, and his name. The angel said we must call him Jesus. Mary wrapped her baby tightly in long strips of cloth to keep him warm and cozy. There was no crib or cradle, so she placed him in a manger. The king of the entire world slept peacefully in the animal's feeding trough as Mary and Joseph looked on, and outside, the nighttime sky blazed with stars. God's very own son, the best gift ever, came into the world in the most unexpected way. And the birth announcement, well, I'm just gonna save that for later. Most amazing birth story ever. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, nobody understood it then, but this tiny baby was going to grow up to teach and heal and show people what God was like. And then Jesus would choose to lay down his life and the whole world to defeat death itself. That is some Christmas gift. Not exactly something you just find on an Amazon wish list. So what's our part in the story? Well, our world gets wrapped up in hoping for so many different things, you know? We want everything from world peace down to a, a shiny new skateboard, and that's great. But in the middle of it all, be sure to remember the most important gift. Right, so find a quiet moment to thank God for the gift of Jesus and ask God to help you walk with Jesus every moment of the coming year. Yeah, because knowing Jesus is an amazing gift that you can open every single day. I think you've got it. So, Merry Christmas, ho, 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 ho. See you next Merry time. Merry Christmas, bye, bye Brian. Brian. So here's the thing, Jesus is the greatest gift. I think we need some sheep at the manger, big fluffy ones. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> Memorize it. Hey, this month's Memorize It comes from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 11 in the Bible. Let's memorize it. I'm going to go to the table of contents. The book of Luke is on page 1,281 in my Bible. Oops, I went too far. <clears throat> Here we go. Today in the town of David... A savior has been born to you. Oops. He is the Messiah, the Lord. That's Luke chapter two, verse 11 in the Bible. Now, memorize it. The first Christmas, God's one and only son, came into this messy world to save us. There may be some pretty cool gifts you received this Christmas, but don't forget, God gave us the greatest gift ever. Jesus! Jesus. And he wants you to show that same love to others, not just at Christmas, but all year long. We can show God's love to others by serving someone in need, listening to a friend, or giving a gift to cheer up a neighbor. You can even give through Mex Giving the Christ at Christmas. Everything you give will help people in need all around the world. The homeless in Jamaica. Orphans in Argentina. Pastors in India. Girls rescued from slavery in the Philippines. People far from God in Charlotte. As we close out today, think about this. How are you gonna give this Christmas? Give to God, to others. How will you show the love of Jesus with those around you? 
Thanks for joining us today. And Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas. and met kids called Giving to Christ at Christmas. And every year, we want to help you get back to the heart of Christmas, which is giving to those in need. My family, we love doing this every year. We encourage our kiddos to help out around the house and earn a little extra money to give to Jesus through Met. And I do mean give to Jesus. See, the money we get from Giving to Christ at Christmas goes straight to the heart of Jesus, helping the people in need around the world in Jamaica, India, Argentina, the Philippines, and even right here in Charlotte. You can learn more about what your gift could do by checking out the Missions 2.0 tab on the Mech website. But if you want to join, we have a way to get the whole family involved. Just go to the Mech Kids part of the Mech app or website and look up Mech Kids Missions. It has all the info you need to get involved in this amazing gift for Jesus. And if you join us, you will know that your Christmas is making an impact all around the world. Okay, well that's it from me. See you next week.